the AC-47 Spooky, one of the stars of the Green Berets from 1968. It's a movie that doesn't always receive the greatest of reviews. It's been called corny and criticized for having a pro-war sentiment. It's probably best described as a World War II John Wayne film, but set in Vietnam, the tone of which didn't sit well with a new generation of American moviegoers. And I'm sure that your Peter's son would want you to have that. What, what? Whatever your opinion is on the film, it did have the advantage of the full cooperation from the U.S. military for filming, which included, of course, the AC-47, which would have been an incredible thing in 1968, as these gunships were only put into use in 1964, just three years before the filming of the Green Berets. Up the ground. Where do you want it? Put it on the camp. Those people have it. We don't. Over. It'll only take a minute. Audiences were essentially being introduced to a new concept of gunships developed by the United States Air Force, all while the war was currently going on. This likely would have been a provocative display of firepower to a movie watcher in the 1960s, more so than even viewing an AC-130 on film today. Beyond the AC-47 in the film, the Department of Defense further included footage of the Fulton Skyhook recovery system. The footage is no doubt impressive. It was meant to be. The American military has had a long history of working with John Wayne. Reminds me, Donovan, you once offered to help us find the right sort of recruits. That's right. How many men do you need? A full battalion to begin with. We'll need 1,100 men. 1,099, sir. John Wayne has never been shy to recruit for the U.S. military. He co-produced the Green Braves, largely as a tribute to Army Special Forces. The major set-piece battle in the film is loosely based on the events of the Battle of Nam Dong, July 5th and 6th of 1964, the same year the AC-47s were being developed. The Green Braves would help showcase American air power. Fine. Captain, will you see the men get all their gear? Yes, but where did this new style of air support come from? In 1964, C-47s had already played a successful role as flare ships during night attacks on fortified hamlets, able to illuminate enemy positions and linger in support for hours in unchallenged airspace. Project Tail Chaser in 1964 saw promise mounting Convair C-131Bs with one minigun, and shortly thereafter Project Gunship would arm the first C-47 with three miniguns. Uh, we're coming down to replace you. How long do you have left on target? Uh, we're just touching the leave. The one one's just rolling in right behind us. Over. The first test runs were instantly successful. All three miniguns were mounted at the port side of a C-47 and could be fired remotely from the cockpit. The first two test aircraft to see combat would be dubbed FC-47s, often operating under the radio call sign Puff. By December of 1964. They were taking on missions protecting villages and personnel from mass attacks by Viet Cong guerrilla units. They were immediately deemed a success in combat. Between December 15th and December 26th, all FC-47's 16 combat sorties blunted VC attacks and were critical to forcing VC retreats. I think Puff broke their back. We can probably move in there tomorrow. Good. God willing and... On February 8, 1965, an FC-47 flying over the Bong Son area demonstrated its capabilities during a Viet Cong offensive. The FC-47 fired 20,500 rounds into a hilltop VC position for over four hours with the VC unable to respond. The gunship killed an estimated 300 VC troops. The need to expand the gunship program was obvious. One of the two test aircraft would be sent back to the U.S. to train crew for a dedicated AC-47 squadron. Starting in 1965, these aircraft would drop the F from their designation, apparently due to protests from fighter pilots, and they were redesignated AC-47s, or Attack Cargo 47s. By the end of 1965, 26 of these old World War II-era aircraft would be converted into deadly weapons, with some of the aircraft having previously been used to deliver mail. It was rare to find a crew member on these aircraft 
that were in fact older than the plane. The C-47's first flight was in December of 1941, with the first civilian variant, the DC-3, first flown in 1935. But up here you'll sleep under blankets, and what blankets? Or, if it's cold below, up here in the sky sleeper, you're cozy and warm. You breathe air swept clean by the winds of the world, while the purring motors lull you to sleep. In November of 1965, the gunships would take on the call sign Spooky, a suitable name given the fear VC troops are developing of it. A Spooky was equipped with three 7.62mm miniguns that could selectively fire either 50 or 100 rounds per second, cruising at an overhead left-hand orbit at 120 knots, and at an altitude of 3,000 feet, that's 910 meters, the gunship could put a bullet into every square yard of a football field-sized target in less than 10 seconds. The impressive photos and videos highlighting these weapons are really showing the streaks of only one out of five bullets which are glowing red tracers used to help aim the guns. Most gunships had numerous flares and 24,000 rounds of ammunition, which was its only real limitation, as it could loiter over a target for hours. At the Battle of Quezon in early 1968, AC-47 gunships proved their durability. For two and a half months of combat, AC-47 gunships maintained constant fire against enemy troops, and illuminated the ground to help detect VC movement. The battle was one of the most publicized of the war, and involved significant American air power, including 24,000 tactical bomb strikes and 2,700 B-52 strikes. During America's involvement in the Vietnam War, 53 aircraft would be converted to AC-47s, and 41 would fly in Vietnam. Out of the 41, 19 were lost to all causes, 12 of which from direct combat. The most notable credit to the AC-47 is that no village or hamlet under spooky protection was ever lost, with countless reports of AC-47s directly rescuing troops and turning the tide of battle on the ground. Despite being in the air, AC-47s were not above the combat. AC-47s flew relatively low and were targeted by any means available. Crewing an AC-47 had its risks. Airman First Class John L. Levito, a loadmaster, received the Medal of Honor for saving his aircraft, Spooky 71, from destruction on February 24, 1969. Spooky 71 was struck by an 82mm mortar round, causing over 3,500 shrapnel holes to the plane and mauling Levito. After being hit, Levito used his body to jettison an armed magnesium flare, which ignited shortly after he ejected it from the aircraft. Levito's actions saved the AC-47 and its crew, which was able to make it back to base. He was very brave. Are you going to be? I'll try. After 1969, most of the AC-47s in Vietnam would be transferred to the Republic of Vietnam Air Force, which would keep using them until 1975, before most of them would be destroyed or captured by the North Vietnamese at the end of the war. After the Vietnam War, AC-47 gunships would be used around the world, in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Colombia would use them into the 21st century, in 2006, as again a counterinsurgency aircraft. They would become known as the Avian Phantasma, or Ghost Plane. The AC-47, developed in the early years of World War II, had become one of the longest flying military aircraft in history. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on one of the first aircraft to pioneer the gunship close air support role. There's lots more to cover with the C-47 and gunships, so hopefully I can expand on both in future videos. As always, add any knowledge you might have in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next video.